As of Wednesday evening, over 62,000 people have contracted the coronavirus, aka COVID-19, inside of the states, and over 880 people have actually died as a result of this thing. And there's even a little girl right here in Georgia, I believe she's in the Atlanta area too, that is currently in a hospital fighting for her life. Stock markets are at their worst point since 2008. Eight. And now is a really great time to invest in stock if you got the bread. Think airline, think home delivery, think condoms, and think streaming platforms. Hey, Queeby, don't forget, y'all, if you got the bread, their IPO was on April 4th. This is not a plug for them. This is just me telling you how to flip the money. Airlines and big business once again have their hands out looking for our money, some to the tune of $58 billion. That's billion would it be. And speaking of airlines, international travel is pretty much dead. Consider it done. (laughs) I don't know where you think you're going, but it ain't off these here shores. Maybe, just maybe, unfortunately, domestic travel may also have to pause as Las Vegas airport has been closed for over four days because of possible COVID-19 cases being found in the uh, air traffic control. Y'all... Is this how we die? Welcome to Quarantine Talks. Self-quarantine. And a quarantine order. Quarantined in their... Held in quarantine. Quarantine. With quarantine in place. Quarantine for the required 14 days. All right, y'all, what's up? This is Jay Carrington, a.k.a. JC, and this is Quarantine Talks, a podcast that was birthed out of me and the immense boredom of being at my fucking house. So, (laughs) what we're going to do is we're going to tackle different topics and different aspects. The very first episode, what you're listening to now, is called, well, is this how we die? Um, Some of y'all might be like, whoa, kind of morbid, but I'm like, not really, though. (laughs) Like, is this how we die? Like, I wasn't really prepared. Um, You know, I don't have a quarantine bay. Um... Like, it was just, there's just a lot of things. I didn't, I haven't been to Antarctica. Like, you know, I really wanted to go and stuff. So, like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, you know, is this how we die? (laughs) I just really want to know. So, along with answering the question posed at the beginning of each podcast, i.e., is this how we die? Or addressing the topic, is this how we die? Uh, we are going to give you guys a little bit of news information. We're going to talk a little bit about some things that you could possibly do to uh, protect yourself. We're going to talk about do's and we're going to talk about don'ts. All right. So let's jump right in. Let's talk about what we know works to help you from getting Dorona. All right. Shout out to all of the black people, black Twitter, black Instagram, because we, the second that I heard the word Dorona, right? The, the, first, like the absolute minute that I saw the words Rona as a way to affectionately <laughs> describe this virus, I was like, you know what? Blacks are amazing, all right? We are great people. Um, I am unapologetically and uh, efficiently Black, um, outstandingly Black, and I stand for all Black people. I'm rooting for everybody Black. I don't see nothing wrong with that. Um, And if you don't like Black people or the Black perspective, the Black millennial perspective on certain things, I would recommend you turn this podcast off right now because you ain't going to fuck with me. It's great like that. But yeah, I just, let's, let's, let's talk about Dorona. All right. So what we know works is washing your hands for at least 20 seconds. Now, a lot of us have been doing this. A lot of my colored brethren um, we are <laughs> brethren and sistren. We are very uh, well versed in the art of washing um, and bathing. But for some people, it was just, it's really just like this, this new thing to wash your hands with soap and water. I don't really know how, why, but yes, we know that this works. Uh, covering your goddamn mouth. Let's do that. No more, no more coughing, no more sneezing and just be like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. no, cover your goddamn mouth. Coughing to the the elbow or the arm of your shirt. Not the elbow. How the fuck are you going to do that? Cough into your shirt. Speaking of shirts and clothing, apparently taking off your clothes as soon as you enter the house from outside 
um, is said to be another good way to do things because apparently the virus can stick to your hair um, and your clothes. So they're like, yo, take off your clothes when you enter the door, when you step through the door, hop in the shower, bing, bong, boom. You know, that'll be another way to keep your system clear. And also Tyrese posted this online. All right. Now you can take that with a grain of salt or you can believe it. There was a doctor um, talking about, or a doctor or a uh, clinician that was speaking about some things that you could do to uh, minimize the effects of the virus on your body. And they, she said that uh, what the one thing that they've learned from um, the Chinese and the Koreans is that drinking warm fluids and mixing that with vinegar or drinking vinegar is a really good way to um, fight it because apparently the the virus works by causing mucus buildup in your lungs and in your throat, and that helps to clear it out. Um, and I also thought that was funny to speak to the credit of what Tyrese posted. Uh, my roommate actually has a um, like a cousin that's been stuck in China for two months um, because they've not been able to get back to the States since everything went down. And she's like, yeah, that's what they tell her over there. It's like, wash your hands and drink vinegar and drink warm water and tea. So, I mean, maybe there's something to that. Last but not least, guys, social distancing, aka the thing that is driving most of us fucking crazy because there ain't no goddamn restaurants open, ain't no fucking sports, ain't, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, ain't no new movies popping or coming out, you know what I'm saying? The only thing you can do at this point is just go to the park. Unless you live in New York, you can't take your ass nowhere unless you want to risk a $1,000 fine, and I don't think you want to do that because New York rent is expensive as a motherfucker. So uh, social distancing is the practice of staying away from other people and limiting your exposure to the possibility of contracting the virus. Um, I actually am probably going to be in North Carolina um, coming up pretty soon. And I myself, personally, I was talking to my mom and my grandma yesterday. I'm like, I don't know if I want to see y'all. Y'all kind of older. You know what I'm saying? I kind of like you. I ain't trying to kill you or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I've been around way more people here in Atlanta than y'all going to be ever in, Atlanta, uh, in North Carolina. So, nah, you know, so just practice social distancing. All right. Let's talk about what doesn't work. And this is going to be pet peeves for me and my black ass. Surgical fucking masks. All right. The blue masks, the masks that most of you people are fucking wearing, they don't work. You know why they don't work? They're surgical masks. You know why a surgical mask won't work walking around your fucking airport or your neighborhood or your house is because neither of the places that I just listed is a medically sterile environment. The other thing about masks in general, masks are intended to keep sick people from getting other people sick, not to keep healthy people healthy. Let me say that again. Masks, like the ones you see, are intended to stop sick people from getting other people sick. And you might be thinking, well, they wear them in hospitals. Yes, they wear them in hospitals because they are in otherwise unsterile environments. But when we think about something like a surgical mask that is used by a surgeon in an operating room, an operating room is a medically sterile environment. That means everything that can be done to make it a germ negative place or a place that is not helpful to bacteria growth has been done. Not only that, the surgeons, nurses, uh, nurses assistants, everybody in that room is wearing a mask as so as to not affect the patient, all right? They don't want the patient to contract anything from them. No spit, no sweat, no bodily fluids. That is why those people wear masks. You walking around buying up all the fucking masks at Costco is not doing anything but fucking causing a ginormous shortage from the people that can actually fix your stupid ass when you get sick. Please stop doing that. Please stop doing that. The N95 respirator mask. Okay, yes, they do work. However, they have to be fitted. I think a lot of people are missing that. You have to fit them to the contours of your face. If you have an opening in your mask, it's not fucking working. I'll say it again. It's not fucking working. You're defeating the point. Not to mention, those are also the masks worn by people in hazmat crews, stuff like that, where they have to go in and clean up situations, places, things that may not be clean, you know? They have to go into these areas. You're taking masks away from the people that need them. Please, please stop buying these things. 
you're causing a shortage. You're causing medical professionals. You're causing people that actually need the mask. There's a deficiency in that. We're going to talk about it later. Second thing, wearing gloves. Okay, so here's the thing about that. If you wear gloves, and let's say you're on an airplane. Let's, let's just do that. So you come on, you got your gloves on, and your surgical mask that doesn't work because you're not in the fucking operating room. And you go and you put that on and you touch your phone that you haven't disinfected. And then you go and you sit and you touch the seat and the tray table that maybe you have or haven't disinfected. And then you go to the back and you use the bathroom all in the same pair of gloves. And then you change your baby and then you touch your food or whatever else. How the fuck are you helping yourself? I was literally on a plane the other day and I asked the guy, I said, yo, bro, um, I mean, how many pair of gloves do you have? And he said, just one. And I was like, okay, because you just went in the bathroom and you didn't take them off. So I'm just wondering, like, what happened here? Like, do you know, like, did you wash the gloves? Like, I'm just trying to figure it out. And then he went and he touched his face. So what I'm saying is, okay, wearing gloves and other protective equipment, they can work if you do it right. I just don't want the same thing to happen with gloves, to happen with masks, i.e. people panic by and buy up a mask thing of gloves. And now the doctors, nurses, surgeons, whomever else that work in medical environments that can help us if something happens, now there's a shortage of those as well. So please, guys, don't do that shit either. All right. Just wash your hands and use hand sanitizer, which brings us to my last and final point, panic buying. Y'all motherfuckers need y'all asses beat. Do you hear me? Do you fucking hear me? There was a video of a guy that did the math, right? Go to Costco, big huge thing of toilet paper has 30 rolls. Now each sheet has 425 sheets per roll. That is 12,750 sheets per case. That means 20 sheets per shit, which comes down to 637.5 shits per case. 45.5 shits per day. A person grabbed four cases of toilet paper for Costco, has a family of four, quarantined for the required 14 days, would need to shit 182 times a day to use the purchase amount of toilet paper at 20 sheets Per shit. Now let's all calm down. Okay, so here's the thing. A lot of people think me, 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 right? But you're not thinking about everybody else that might need the same thing that you do. And regardless of what you actually think, even though you live in your house or you live in your apartment, in your building, you still you still share that house inside of a neighborhood, inside of a city or a county or a state with other people. And those people share it with you as well. And the one thing that we all have in common, regardless of skin color, creed, race, or religion, is the planet that we live on. We only have one of it. It's currently burning still in some, some countries. I think Australia might still be on fire on top of every freaking thing else. We all really have to come together and really think about not just ourselves, but the people around us. And, and so guys, this is going to bring us to the last portion of the show that we're going to call self-fulfilling prophecy. All right. Because I want to talk about conscious and unconscious ways that the earlier stupid ass things like hoarding the damn surgical mask or panic buying. I want to connect these two inside of a story that is easier to understand that a lot of people can relate to. And maybe you can see where we're coming from with this. So say Mary Jane, we're going to call her Mary Jane. So say Mary Jane, for whatever reason, she's panicked about COVID-19. You know, she don't want her family to get the Rona, all that shit. She goes to the medical supply store and she buys up the entire stock of face surgical masks and gloves. All right. Now there's a hospital right down the street from Mary Jane. All right. Dr. Amanda is working in this hospital and due to the influx of patients, her hospital or her practice has run out of protective equipment, the PPE, you know what I'm saying, of the face mask and the gloves. So she sends someone else to go to the medical supply store to get these things for her and bring them back so she can see her patients and she can make everybody well and so she can do her job. Right? This person then comes back and they, for obvious reasons, because of Mary Jane buying up everything, they don't have any more medical supplies to give. 
She has to stop practicing medicine because she cannot adequately protect herself and her staff. And after being exposed to the virus, Dr. Amanda, she gives it to her daughter. Dr. Amanda lives in the same building as Mary Jane. So while Mary Jane thinks that her family is protected and she's got her family in gloves and surgical masks, so on and so forth, her little girl, for whatever reason, goes outside. She sees Dr. Amanda's little girl. Dr. Amanda's little girl passes it to Mary Jane's little girl. And because Mary Jane not only has all of the protective masks and all of the goddamn gloves, but she bought all of the Lysol wipes and Lysol and pretty much every disinfectant in the store as well. So even though she's at home, she comes in and now they got the Rona too. Now, mind you, this is a story that could happen, but I'm just using it as an example to say and explain how self-fulfilling prophecies work, you know? Because again, we have to think about this logically, all right? We all live in this world together. We all live on this planet together. We all share everything. Because as far as I know, ain't no aliens coming to save us and shit. So, I mean, like, you know, and uh, I'm not going to delve too deep into religion on this podcast, but I ain't seen nobody's deity walking around handing out goddamn coronavirus vaccines. So... Can we please, please act like we all have common sense, right? Can we please, please act like, I know it's not a normal situation, but there's no need to buy up all the toilet paper or buy up all the Lysol. You're only going to go through like, what, one can at a time? Like, what the fuck are you people doing? Bathing in it? Like, what the hell? Can we do this, please? Quarantine Talks is produced and edited by myself, Jay Carrington Smith. And I want to give a special shout out to at TV boy on IG. If you guys are checking out the cover art on my Instagram, uh, the Mona Lisa with the face mask, he painted that, man. He's a dope street artist over in Europe. Like, big up to him. Thanks again, guys. Tune in for the next episode. But did you die, though? Holla. Peace.